All right, in the second half of one six, we're gonna be dealing with absolute value inequalities. So in this first example three, I'm just gonna have you take a look at four basic inequalities that you could see. So you'll see we've got two less than, two greater than, two positives, and two negatives. And the left-hand side is as simple as it can be. So here is what we are going to do. So if the absolute value of D is less than four, we're gonna start just by looking at a number line. Okay, so remember the way you read this is the distance from zero on a number line is less than four. Okay, so let's start with the zero on a number line. And then if we're saying we can go less than four units away, but that's it. So that means we can go to the left, I'm sorry, to the right four units from zero. That means we can go to the left four units from zero, but we can't go any farther than that. So we can go four units to the right, which would place us at positive four, and we could go four units to the left, which would place us at negative four. Okay, so we're saying we can go anywhere in here and any of those numbers would work. Because again, the way you read this is the distance from zero has to be less than four units. And all of these numbers are within four units from zero. Now, do we include the four? No, because it's not less than four units, it is four units. And then same thing here. This isn't less than four units, it is four units. So that's what the solution would look like. Now let's write down what the graph or how we'd write this in inequality notation. You would say that D is in between 4 and negative 4. So it's less than 4, but it's actually bigger than negative 4. So remember, that's how we write that three-piece inequality, is that D could be somewhere between positive and negative 4. So D is less than 4, but it's also greater than negative 4. Okay, so now let's look at this one. Let's look at a number line. So start with 0. So this says the distance from 0 has to be less than negative four units. Okay, so now remember negative four, you can't go negative four units. Negative four is not a distance, it's nothing that you can measure. So if you're saying you have to go less than negative four units, you actually really, you can't do that. That's not something that you can do. Because less than negative four would be numbers like negative five, negative six, negative seven, you can't go negative five, negative six units away from zero. So this is actually impossible. The way that this is phrased, this is completely impossible to do. You cannot be less than negative four units away. Okay, so what you'd write, remember this symbol? We put a little like circle with a line through it and that means no solution. So anytime you see this, if you see absolute value less than a negative number, there's no solution. It's not possible to do that. It can never, ever, ever, be negative because the absolute value is never going to be negative. And the only types of numbers that are less than negative four are more negative numbers. Okay, so this is a big important type right here. That gives you the empty set, no solution. Next one, the distance from zero has to be greater than four units. So again, let's set up our number line and go off of that. So here's zero. So we know the number four is obviously four units away. And then I can be anything that's more than four units away. So that would be anything over here. More than four units away. Five units, six units, seven units. But remember, I can also go four units to the left. And then that would land at negative four. And I can be anything more than four units away. Five units, six units, seven units. Okay, so that would be this portion. And again, because this is just a greater than, not a greater than or equal to, the negative four is not included. The positive four is not included. So this looks just like the OR graphs that we were dealing with in the last lesson. See how the OR graphs end up with the two little pieces here. So this is an OR graph, and so we write it like this. This piece, we write it as x is less than negative 4. So we start at negative 4, all the numbers less than. Or x is greater than positive 4. All right. Last option here, this one. The distance from zero has to be more than negative four units away. Okay, so here's zero. So negative four units away, you can't do that. You can't do negative three units, you can't do negative two units, you can't do negative one units away. Those are all numbers that are bigger than negative four. But zero is also bigger than negative four. And one is bigger than negative four. So you know you can go one unit away. And two is bigger than negative four, so you can go two units away, 
and 3 is bigger than negative 4, so you can go 3 units away. Hopefully you see where I'm going with this. You can go 4 units away. You can go 5 units away. So what types of numbers are bigger than a negative 4? Well, every positive number is bigger than a negative 4. So if it's saying that the distance from 0 has to be positive, well, every distance from 0 is positive. So that ends up covering the whole darn number line. So what you'd write for this is you'd write all reals. All real numbers fall into this category. And if you think about it, you could put any number that you want in here. Pick 100. The absolute value of 100, yep, that's bigger than negative 4. Pick like negative 2,000. The absolute value of negative 2,000 is positive 2,000, and that is bigger than negative 4. So this inequality is always true, no matter what number you pick, whereas this number, this inequality, will never be true, no matter what number you pick. So this kind of gives you just the guideline for four different scenarios that could happen. So that's what we're going to write down here. All right, so these are a little bit more complicated. We've got the ax plus b. If you've got a greater than, like you do here, and again, look at this. We're assuming that C is positive because we already dealt with this weird scenario and we dealt with this weird scenario. So if we're looking at something like this, we set up these two inequalities. The greater than, we set up the or inequalities like this. So we've got the first inequality. We take AX plus B. So look what I did here. I'm sorry, or I'm sorry this I wrote X's where it should have been D's. I apologize. That may have confused you. So the D right here, could look exactly like this looked, except without the absolute value. So that's the first one we can write. Could be greater than C. Or the next thing we did is we took just the D out of the absolute value. So we can take the AX plus C, I'm sorry, plus B out of the absolute value, flipped the greater than to a less than, and then changed the positive 4 to a negative 4. So here then we change less than negative C. So if you have this, if you have this greater than inequality, you set up this compound inequality, okay? Next one, less than. It looks just like this. You take the D out of the absolute value and then trap it in between the positive and negative 4. So here you take the AX plus B out of the absolute value and then you trap it in between the positive and negative C. So this, remember when it says greater than C units, that means you can be more than C units to the right, so anything beyond C units to the right, and then anything beyond C units to the left, and remember less than takes you farther to the left. Whereas this one, if you have to be less than C units away, you can only go C units to the right, you can only go C units to the left, and it traps you in there. So these, this is very, 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 very important. So let's look at our examples. This is a greater than. It's a greater than, so we know we're going to set it up as an or. So you can go at least 13 units to the right, or you can go at least 13 units to the left. So remember, 13 units to the left is a negative 13, and going farther than that to the left would mean a less than. So these are your two inequalities. We solve our two inequalities. So with both of these, we're going to start by adding 7. So I'll just do it at the same time. So here, the 7's cancel, I'm left with 4x. Here, the 7's cancel, I'm left with 4x. 13 plus 7 is 20. And negative 13 plus 7 is negative 6. And then the next step to get the x by itself, we divide both sides by 4. So here, this is x is greater than 5. The symbol doesn't flip because I divided by a positive. And then x is less than, this can reduce down to 3 over 2. Okay, so now let's graph this. So here's the 0. So x is greater than 5. We'll start there. Here's 5. Greater than means open circle, and we shade to the right. Less than negative 3 halves. We'll put our negative 3 halves right here. Less than means open circle, shade to the left. Okay, so that is your final graph, and then these are your final answers. Write the word or. Okay, part B. This is a less than, which means you set it up as that triple inequality. So 5z plus 2 has to be less than 17 units from 0. So we can go as many as 17 units to the right. We can go as many as 17 units to the left, but that's it. So now this is a triple, so remember we're trying to get the z by itself in the middle. So first thing we're going to do is subtract the 2 from both sides. 
So 17, 2, we get negative 19. It's less than or equal to, now we have the 5z in the middle. Less than or equal to 17 minus 2 is 15. And then again, trying to get that z by itself, it's being multiplied by 5, so the opposite is to divide by 5. Okay, so divide both sides. And then what we're going to do is just reduce this down. So this actually doesn't reduce down. We have the z by itself because these cancel. And then 15 divided by 5 does reduce. That's 3. So this, just so you know, if you wanted to write it in a mixed fraction, that is negative, or I'm sorry, negative 3 and 4 fifths, if that will help you graph. So it's going to look like this. Start with your 0. And then we get trapped in between positive 3 and negative 3 and 4 fifths. And these both have the or equal to, so these are both going to be closed circles. And then we shade everything in between. So that is what the and graph looks like, stuck in between two circles. All right, last, we've got a little application problem. So to prepare for a job interview, Hinder researches requirements and pay. She discovers the average starting salary is 38500 but her actual starting could differ by as much as 2450 Okay, so 38500 is kind of the middle ground. So this is saying the difference between her salary and the, and the middle ground salary looks like this. So this represents how her salary compares to their average salary. And so it's saying the distance, so I'm going to put that in absolute value, could differ by as much as. So as much as actually sounds like a greater than, but it's actually a less than because it's going to stay within those bounds. So it looks like this. The difference between her actual salary and the average salary differs by as much as 2450, meaning less than 2450, because as much as means that 2450 is the max. So that's the inequality, and then we're going to solve it. So this is a less than or equal to. So just like this one, we're going to set it up as a three-piece. So the S minus 38,500 gets sandwiched between positive 2450 and negative 2450. Okay, so to get her actual salary by itself, we're going to add, or I'm sorry, this should be a negative. We're going to add 38,500 to both sides. And then we'll see her possible range of salaries. So when we add these up, it's 0, 5, Carry the 1. Okay, and then here's the S. And now remember, this is negative, so it's really 0 minus 0. And then we're going to have to do some carrying here. Okay, so 10 minus 5. 4 minus 4 is 0. And then 38 minus 2. Okay, so those are the numbers. So it said the average salary is this, but her actual starting salary could differ by as much as 2450. So this is the range of what her actual salary should look like. Let's write that a little bit neater. So it could be anywhere between 36,050 and 40,950. So that would be your final answer. That's her possible range of salaries. All right, that is it for chapter one.